Hi guys, uh, this is Matt from Downback Fishing, and I'm just here to show you today a basic bluegill rig. I'm going to be teaching you um, how to get fishing, uh, how to get started on fishing, and like if you want to, if you're an adult and you want to take your kids out fishing, uh, this is a great way to get your kids excited. Uh, fishing for bluegill is one of the most uh, popular fishing attractions. Uh, it, they're easy to catch and they fight really well. Um, so in this video I'm going to go over a simple rig, um, what kind of equipment you're going to be using, and uh, hope you stay tuned and enjoy the episode. Alright, so now I'm just going to show you some of the uh, terminal tackle that you're going to be using. Uh, what I like to do for bluegill, uh, I don't fish for bluegill all, all that often, but when I do, uh, I just use a simple, probably the simplest thing you can use in fishing, a worm or some dough on a hook with a bobber. Uh, when you're fishing for bluegill, bluegill, they're not that big, so you don't have to go overkill on bobbers. Like this right here, this is a one inch, uh, I believe it's an eagle claw bobber. Um, just really, it's just a perfect size for them. Uh, this is probably a three quarters inch bobber, and this is another one inch bobber. Now bobbers, they come in all different colors and sizes. It doesn't really matter what color you get. But for bluegill, you want to get something pretty small, because they're pretty small fish. But um, anything smaller than an inch diameter bobber works great. For hooks, I tend to use a size 2 or smaller um, eagle claw bait holder hook. Um, it's just a regular hook, um, and they're great. Um, size 2 is a little bit big for bluegill, but they work. Um, I... You can also buy packages that come with a, an assortment of hooks, like these here. These are just two different size hooks that work great for bluegill. Um, you can get them at your local Walmart, tackle store, anything. Uh, and for bait, bluegill love worms, and they also like bright shiny things, or bright colorful things. Uh, I tend to use sometimes uh, Berkeley Power Bait. Uh, I use the dough because um, pellets are just too big for them. They will eat them, but you got to get a pretty big bluegill. Uh, so this dough stuff, it stinks really bad. Um, but all you do is you take a little bit of it. Sorry, I got that. And you just roll it into a ball. Take it out of the packet and roll into a little ball like that. Now, in a few seconds. I will be teaching you how to put it on the hook and how to tie your hook to your line. Alright, for educational purposes and so you can see how to tie it, uh, I'm just going to be using some uh, twine with a big, this is what I use for pike fishing sometimes, for uh, using live bait or something like that. Uh, I'm just going to teach you how you tie your hook to your line. So first you want to start by taking your tag end of your line or the like end of your line, stick it through the eyelet of the hook so you have this. Next you're going to take it, hold the hook in your right hand or left hand, it doesn't matter, and just give it a few t twists. I usually like to go 8 or 9, uh, sometimes up to 10 uh, twists in the line, and then you're going to find that you're going to get a little hole down by the eyelet, like that. Now you're going to take your tag end, just stick it right through that little hole. See if I can get it because this line is frayed. Now it's much easier with monofilament or floor carbon or anything. But what you're going to do is you're just going to start to wiggle it down. Usually with mono and stuff like that, you can use a little bit of saliva and it'll slick and right down. And you're going to get something that looks like this. It's just going to be a little wrap. Um, it's like a clinch knot. And it's going to hold your bait, I mean your hook, really secure. This is what I use almost always when I'm bass fishing, any kind of uh, fish fishing. And you're going to want just a little bit of tag. Uh, bluegill don't take care of that much, but once you get fishing for bass and stuff... They get a little bit more finicky. Uh, you don't want your leader super long, maybe like an half an inch to an inch. Um, but that's how you tie your hook to 
your line. Now I'm going to show you how to attach your bobber and how to put it on bait. Alright, now that you have your hook tied to your main line, you're going to have just that little bit of uh, knot right there. And that'll be plenty uh, because bluegill, they pipe, fight hard, but uh, they're not going to snap a hook if you have quite a few twists there. Uh, I don't suggest using your teeth because you will break them. I haven't, but... Uh, don't use your teeth when you're using heavier set uh, line. This right here is six pound Ber Berkeley uh, trilene monofilament. Uh, this is a great line to use for bluegill fishing. Some people go two pound tests, four pound test. Um, I usually stick stick to uh, six pound test. So if you hook into a bass or a bigger fish, you it won't you won't snap your line. Um, but eight pound test works too. Um, bluegill, they're not very finicky fish, so they'll bite anything, it doesn't matter. Um, but you got your line. Uh, depending on the depth of water you're fishing, you're going to want at least probably a foot of line. But if you're fishing five feet, six feet of water, you're going to want maybe like two, three feet of line as a leader. To attach a bobber, you're going to want to take your bobber first and make sure you have a nice long leader and what you're going to do is on bobbers you push down that little piece comes out that little piece attaches to your line what you do is you take it out so you have that extended and you just wrap it around right in there I like to do two or three loops around so it's nice and secure and you got that now that bobber is not going to go anywhere but just to make sure like sometimes it'll slide up the line and stuff but what I like to do is I like to go on the other side put your finger over the bottom hole push up and you have that little one I just like to do one wrap around there and now you have your basic bluegill fishing rig you have your line and your bobber and your hook now for bait I like to use just night crawlers you can buy like a dozen of them for like a dollar at your local uh, tackle shop or Walmart, it doesn't really matter, uh, wherever worms are sold. But for right now, since I don't have worms on hand, I'm going to be using power bait. Power bait's a great alternative, it works really well for bluegill. So I have my little ball that I've already made, and just probably the size of a pea. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and just slide it right up onto the shank. Now it's going to sit right in the bend, so when the fish goes to suck it up, it's got the tip of the hook right in its mouth. And that's about it. Um, with worms, you're going to want to hook it in the top and then give it a twist and hook it two or three times. You don't need a bit, lot of worm for bluegill, maybe an inch at most, maybe two if you want to. But they'll bite anything. Um, I've caught them on bare hooks before. But uh, so there you go, your basic bluegill fishing rig. Great to take your kids out fishing. Not for the more advanced angler, um, but if you want to get your kids out fishing, ha let them catch some fish and have some fun with it. This is a great setup, and I highly recommend it. For kids, um, I like to recommend like push button reels uh, because they're easy to cast and they don't get wrapped up too much like inside the reel. My bluegill slash trout setup is a quantum optics uh, reel. This is a smaller series. This is the Quantum Op 610, which is just a small little compact reel, uh, really solid reel. And I have a Mitchell Advocate uh, rod. This is a 5 foot 6 reel, mean rod, but a uh, great little rod, gets the job done. Um, but like I said, use just a little uh, push button reel if you're fishing with kids. Um, but thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on the next episode of Down Back Fishing.